In this video, you are going to learn about gymnosperms. The video will be divided into two parts. The first part explains the life cycle of gymnosperms, while the second part explains the features of gymnosperms. So let's try to understand the life cycle of gymnosperms first. Just like angiosperms, the life cycle of gymnosperms also starts with the seed. The seed is a protective structure which contains the diploid embryo covered inside a protective covering called the seed coat. This seed on finding suitable conditions starts to germinate and develops into a tall tree which represents the well-developed sporophytic body of gymnosperms. The sporophyte is well differentiated into leaves, stem and root. But unlike angiosperms, the sporophyte of gymnosperms do not develop flowers as their reproductive structure. Instead, functionally similar structures called cones are formed. The cones or strobilus is made up of modified leaves called sporophylls which are spirally arranged around a common axis. These cones are the site of spore formation in gymnosperms. The cones can be classified into two types depending on the type of spore formed in them. These cones are called male and female cones respectively. The male cones are made up of microsporophylls which contains the site of formation of male spores called microsporangium. Inside the microsporangium, several diploid cells called microspore mother cells are present which divides by meiosis resulting in formation of haploid male spores or microspores. Each of these microspore later develops into a pollen grain. The process of formation of microspores from microspore mother cells is called microsporogenesis while the development of pollen from microspore is called microgametogenesis. The pollen represents the male gametophyte of gymnosperms. As the male cone ultimately forms the pollen, so it is also called pollen cone. Similarly, the female cones are made up of megasporophylls. The megasporophyll of female cones are modified into ovules, which represents the site of formation of megaspores, that is, the megasporangium. Ovule consists of protective envelope called integument on the outer side, which encloses a tissue made up of diploid cells called the nucellus. The integument leaves a small opening on the ovule and this is called micropyle. One of the cell of the nucellus differentiate into megaspore mother cell. The diploid megaspore mother cell now divides by meiosis to form four haploid megaspores. Out of these four haploid megaspores, the first three from the micropyle end are non-functional and degenerates and the last megaspore remains functional. This functional megaspore now divides repeatedly by mitosis and the resulting structure thus formed is called endosperm which consists of haploid cells and represents the female gametophyte in gymnosperms. During this process, either a part of nucellus or the entire nucellus can get consumed. Two or more female sex organs called archegonium develops inside the endosperm each having one haploid female gamete or the egg. The pollen formed by male cone reaches the female cone by wind pollination as gymnosperms do not produce bright colors or fragrance to attract pollinators. Pollen lands on the micropyle of the ovule and starts to germinate. As a result, a pollen tube containing male gamete starts to grow out from the pollen. The pollen tube grows towards archegonium and releases the male gamete near the female gamete. The haploid male and female gamete fuses, resulting in formation of diploid zygote by fertilization. The zygote then divides mitotically and develops into embryo, 
the ovule gets developed into a seed which contains the embryo and the cotyledon covered inside the protective seed coat. As the female cone ultimately produces seeds, so it is also called the seed cone. So that's all for this video. If you still have any doubts regarding this topic, you can read the article uploaded on the BioViz website or ask it in the comment section below.